What's up everybody? This is an exciting video that uh, I've been wanting to do for a long time but haven't been able to find the sand casting method that I thought would work or I actually tested different sand casting methods um, including sodium silicate sand and uh, it just wasn't quite strong enough for these silicone pieces so this is a silicone mold with all silicone castings of little bottle openers Anyway, so let's get go ahead and get started. So, so to start, we're gonna go ahead and grease up this uh, wooden box that I'm gonna use as a dam for the sand. And I wasn't sure how sticky it might be, the, the epoxy resin to the, the wood, so I just thought I'd use some, uh, some paste wax to, to protect it. Anyway, to make our resin bonded sand, we're gonna do 14 parts sand here. And this is just a, a sandblasting media that I had. It was really fine grain, so I decided to try it. It was the best sand I had at the time, so that's what I'm using. So 14 parts, no, actually 15 parts, sorry, 15 parts sand to one part epoxy resin. And this is a amazing brand, epoxy resin. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. I'll also leave a, a link in the description below. I believe they sell it on Amazon. So we'll get equal parts there and we'll go ahead and mix that up. You wanna mix this up really, really well. Make sure there's no unmixed epoxy of part A or part B within that, uh, within your mixing cup. That's important. So I'm just using a drill here with a, uh, a egg beater. Attach uh, just a, you can find these at the thrift stores. That's where I got mine. So I use these to mix things up once in a while and it works really good for the sand. So I'm pouring in the epoxy resin really slowly into the sand mix and then just spending enough time to make sure that it's uniform throughout the sand. And it's not very much resin to sand, so you gotta mix it really, really well. Once you do that, then you, uh, you can take it and we're just gonna put a fine coat over, just like you would if you were doing a regular sand casting, so getting everything down into the small parts. And uh, the good thing about this sand is it's really, really, really soft right now, and then it hardens up extremely hard, so fantastic way to do a sand casting. I actually learned about this method through the channel Cast Iron Gypsy. That gal over there is doing cast irons um, castings having fun so go check her channel out I'll leave a link for there um, so I learned about this process from her so I thought I'd give her credit for that anyway I'm using a uh, the sandblasting media as a face sand and then I just have a whole bunch of this is like a play sand grit actually a little bit heavier than that um, in sand as the top sand so it ends up look, kind of looking like a cake. It's really actually pretty. I think we'll do uh, another video of just using the sand as a, uh, a casting media all by itself. So I think we'll do the uh, the doorstop, the skull doorstop that I, I did, except out of this sand. Because it's extremely hard. It works really, really well. And it's an extremely hard material once, it's, uh, once that epoxy is set up. So... Yeah, I'm just smoothing everything out, and, and uh, here I'm making a, a casting cup, just experimenting with different different methods. So getting it compacted down there, and then we'll open it up for the cup. So pretty simple stuff. Once we've got it uh, to the height we want, then we can just take a, this is a copper pipe I'm using to take a core out of the center so that uh, it'll be easier in the future. So after it sets up, this was the next day, um, then we can go ahead and take our, our dam or box off 
and uh, open it up and see what we have. So I'm testing it to see how good it is and if I think it's going to work. And I'm excited because it's at this point I, I realize this is going to be the method that will work for me. And this is the first time I've seen anybody make a silicone silicone cast sand casting and there is a bond that sand makes that possible like I said the sodium silicate could be done on certain types of molds on this one I couldn't get it to work I kept having issues with edges breaking and and uh, yeah it was just it could have worked but it was it was too much too much effort to make it work so it wasn't worth it go ahead and make them I'm making the other side now again just making that uh, that surface surface sand spreading it out and trying to even it the best I can and we're mixing up the second batch the the top coat of the sand this is the heavier grit sand and it's key to, to mix in the epoxy really slow. That gives you a nice uniform mixture in the sand. Sorry about the focus on the on the camera. It was going in and out as I was putting that sand in. Probably should have backed up the camera a little bit, but anyway. This sand, I think, looks really cool. I'm, I'm excited to make some projects with it. I was, I was thinking maybe like a, even some uh, stepping stones or something like that would be kind of cool. I'm not sure how well this, e re this epoxy resin would hold up outdoors, but it is a pretty strong material once it's made up. So we're just smoothing it out again, and and then I'll tamp it down and. And then just clean it up. A lot of, a lot of the times you see people doing the sand casting, they'll they'll take it all the way up to the top of the box, and then screed it off. And uh, I just thought that'd be a waste of, of sand and resin, so and it'd make the molds that much heavier. Anyway, I didn't think it was needed, and apparently it wasn't. At least for what I was casting at the time, so. all compacted in and, and smoothing it out so not real not real hard it's pretty simple stuff it's just actually a cement trowel to, that I'm using to uh, smooth off the top here it worked really well again the next day and so it's set overnight we're opening it up. So I forgot to use a parting powder on this, uh, like a baby powder or a talcum powder as a separator between the layers, but it actually came apart okay. I was really worried it was going to stick and be permanent together. It ended up okay. So, but in the future, when I do another mold, I will definitely be using a parting powder of some sort to to help separate those layers. So, there it is, both sides cast. This is the next day, all hardened up, and uh, you can go ahead and take out all of the silicone pieces now. And everything turned out just awesome. Took all all the details really well super happy with this process I'm excited to do more castings in the future with it and uh, yeah so we'll have more videos of this uh, resin bonded sand quite a few more actually because I really like the process it doesn't take as good of uh, details as as uh, your ceramic molds like the hellfire and, and uh, suspended slurries and those types but it, uh, it does take pretty good detail so we'll be using it for, for some projects. Anyway, I'm just taking a Dremel. Dremel, sorry. For those of you who are going to make fun of me for that. The, uh, and these are diamond diamond bits. And you can use different types of bits. But the diamond works really well. Because it doesn't get doled up by the by the sand in the, in the resin mix. So Using a regular drill bit, I just drilled 
some venting holes on each each side here. This will allow all the, the gases to escape as we're as we're casting the metal. Anyway, that worked okay. Doled up the drill bit pretty bad, but that's all right. It's just a cheap drill bit I had laying around, so I was okay with using it. And to make our casting holes, our vent, and our... I can't remember the name of them. But to make our two casting holes, I am using a spade bit to go through the... to go through the sand here. Works pretty well. This heavier grit sand is actually harder on the drill bits than the, than the softer sand was, so... Just keep that in mind is uh, if you go to make a, a mold maybe you want to just use all the same sand because it's a lot softer a diamond uh, a diamond bit a hole saw would work really well here as well I actually think I have that right size but this was simple enough and works so and it did but it did really dole up the the spade bit as well. Now I'm using uh, liquid nails. And this is something I saw in in uh, Cast Iron Gypsy's videos as well. As she, this is what she was using to uh, to combine the the molds together. I don't know if a, like a 100% silicone would work better. I'm not sure why it is they're using liquid nails, but it worked for them, so I thought I'd try it, and it did did work well. So. I glued it together and then I just I just thought I'd smoothen out this outside edge just to clean it up a little bit. Nothing more than a little aesthetics here. But I think it kinda looks like a uh, a baked cake. Kinda has a fun look to it. Almost looks delicious. So gonna glue on the riser now. And the casting cup. So I actually, off camera, I, I made, uh, took the Dremel and, and opened that up a little bit so that it, the metal could pour in easily. So I didn't get that on camera, but pretty simple to do. So now it's time to start up my, uh, my foundry. And this is... Uh, this is a homemade foundry that I built and using a, a burner from Nobox 7. I'll leave a link in that for that burner as well. Um, the sanding pot that I usually, or the sand pot that I usually, or the sand can, I don't know what you'd call it, that I usually used was too small for this mold. So I'm just laying some sand out here, just a place for the molten metal to go if it spills over the edge. Actually did so it was a good thing I had some sand down to protect the concrete from from getting molten metal on it and popping so I uh, put some ingots here on the side of the the foundry or furnace warm them up getting ready to, ready to melt and this is a similar zinc alloy to Zamek um, it's a die cast material and I'll show you in, in the next video actually where I get that from and I actually get it you, there's a lot of places you can get it from it's all over in our in our in our world used for many different things but uh, pretty easy to find as well so I will be showing that in uh, the next the next video I do and where I get that and let you a little bit more information but anyway so we're just pulling off the dross now about ready to cast our piece. And this zinc alloy is really forgiving material, so it's a great thing to, to start with um, casting. It's easier than aluminum and, and other type metals. It, it takes on really good details and and is easy to find.
So we waited quite a few hours for this to cool all the way off. I'm just opening up that mold now. And this is definitely a lost, lost mold process. You won't be reusing this mold for anything. It's pretty much done. Um, when it was curing, and, and uh, there's a, a bit of gases that come off of this from the from the metal burning off some of the resin. I would highly highly suggest that you do, if you follow this process, not to be breathing that, those resins in, as I would imagine it's fairly toxic. So, but it turned out fantastic. I am I'm in love with this process, guys. This is so cool. Super, super simple. You can go down to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy some play sand, filter it out a little bit, mix it with the resin, and you're you're off to the races. You can be sand casting if you've got a foundry furnace set up. You can be uh, you can be doing your sand casting just like that. So this is actually an easier way than even making your own your own sand or buying sand on online which can be pretty expensive so this is actually be an easier way to start sand casting and it's more forgiving so it's it's way easier to do now I'm just cleaning each cleaning one of these up for you guys to see using a, a angle die grinder here and this is uh, different grits and, and polishing pads that you can get for these these angle grinders. Works really well. Really like it. So once we're happy with it and it's sanded to a, a pretty fine sand, or even polished to some degree, we can bring it over and have it sandblasted. And I'm just using a, uh, a portable sandblaster. I have a cabinet, but I was having some issues with it, so I just thought I'd bring this out here today. And and blast it out here in the grass. So this will give us a uniform finish to uh, polish off from. And uh, once we've got that, then I'll just go ahead and put on, this is a uh, an acid bath. This is a copper, copper sulfate. Probably should be wearing some gloves here. But anyway, some copper sulfate. Turns the, uh, the zinc kind of a blackish gray color. Really like it. This is, uh, can be found in uh, root removers that they sell at uh, the box stores for clearing out roots in your drainage system. So, so I think it's a teaspoon per, per gallon or something like that. Anyway, once we get it polished up, and we'll just put a paste wax on it to keep, help keep the oxidation from happening past where we've, where we've polished and want to keep it, keep it clean. So, and I did wash this with water before I put the paste wax on as well. There you have it, guys. One finished bottle opener. And this is a uh, something I made up, and it's just really cool to be able to make something and, and have it turn out and ha and form and form a function of some sort. As simple as bo opening bottle. Hope you liked the video. Subscribe, share, like my videos. I have other uh, metal casting videos and we'll be doing a lot more. I'm really into this metal casting right now. So we'll be doing a whole bunch of this metal casting, trying some different processes. Uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching.